Welcome to episode seven, the last episode of season one of Ichari Bachore, Okinawan Voices and Stories podcast. But before we get started with this episode, we want to look back on 2021 and all that we've accomplished. What was your favorite part? According to Spotify Wrapped, we released six episodes across 324 minutes of content with listeners from 15 different countries. Um, and our biggest listener bases were in the US, Japan, Canada, Brazil, Germany, Australia, and the UK. We also launched a super success- successful end of the year giveaway and Kickstarter to back our content in 2022. And thank you to our artists and community uh, partners, Lisa Risa, Candice Soon, Nina Zuma Pottery, Kao Yukawa, Mahealani and Back, Malama Soaps, Kanasa Organics, Hiromi Toma, and Mariko Middleton, who provided the prizes for our giveaway. Thank you to everyone who participated in our giveaway and those who donated to our Kickstarter. Our goal was $300, and you all quadrupled that amount, and we were able to raise a total of $1,230 towards our expenses for next year. That's so amazing. Um, these funds will go towards compensating guests and the music that we use for the podcast and going back to supporting the community. We are still so blown away by your generosity and so extremely grateful for all your support. And we'd like to take the time now to give out some shout outs to those donors. Starting from the Jinbe Same backers, who we will also have a small segment for future podcasts, so be sure to tune in. Uh, first off is Momi Cummings, Jennifer Hicks, and Marissa Kaneshiro. Our Shisa backers, Jason Reclino, Carrie, Caitlin Higa, Taylor Seeker, Ayo, Yuki K, Dana Newhauser, Jamie Nakamura Lin, Mai B, Naila Yu, Jesse Shiroma, and Christine Kayan Nakahara. Thank you as well to our Hibiscus backers, Micah Mizukami, Sasha Hanako, Libby, and Aika, as well as a very big thank you to our Shinsuko backers, uh, Karen Tangen Okuda, Megumi Mask, Chinami, and Ben Uyechi. And lastly, we also want to thank our eight backers who chose no reward. Paris, Mia, Elijah, Catherine, Misty, S, Casey and Elaine. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you. Um, if you missed out on the Kickstarter and would like to donate, feel free to head to our Kofi. You can find the link in our show notes. These funds will go towards our season two funding. Thank you to Corey who donated this past month. We really appreciate your support because it allows us to bring you well curated, community centered content and guest speakers. <laughs> Which brings us to today's episode, which will explore Uchina Soguachi, or the Okinawan New Year, with special guest Eric Wadashinchi. Uh, Mariko and I had such a great time speaking with Eric and learning about the very unique Okinawan New Year's tradition. So we hope that you'll enjoy the episode as much as we did. Thank you again for listening and for supporting the podcast. As a token of our appreciation, we wanted to feature a couple of our listeners in today's episode as well. So up next, you'll hear from several Shimanchu friends of the podcast on how they uniquely celebrate the new year. It's been a real treat getting to hear from so many diverse Shimanchu, and we hope to feature even more listener-based submissions in the new year. Ipe ni he debiru for listening. Now on to the episode. Hi everyone and Happy New Year! My name is Hanako and I'm from Fairfax, Virginia and my Okinawan family celebrates uh, the New Year typically by eating Okinawan-inspired um, toshikoshi soba um, with lots of kamaboko and sammainiku. We also will eat, you know, other side dishes like jushi and champuru, and um, it's just it's just a good time. Um, growing up, we would spend time with our Okinawan family and friends in the D.C. area, um, but the last few years, it's been a little bit harder to gather. Um, usually, Okinawa Kai of D.C. has a Shinnan Kai party where we get to see everyone and, again, eat lots of yummy Okinawan food um, and showcase talent and play games and stuff like that. 
but maybe maybe not this year um, with with COVID. Um, this year, my husband and I are just eating um, Okinawa soba type uh, toshikoshi soba and uh, watching TV to ring in the new year and hope to get together with his Okinawan family and my Okinawan family soon. Happy New Year, everyone! Hello, my name is Marcellus and I live in Ginowan, Okinawa. My wife and I celebrate New Year's in a pretty standard fashion. On the day before New Year's Eve, we start our annual deep cleaning, or Osoji, and then on New Year's Eve itself, we'll head up north to Onna, to our favorite soba place, Nakamura Soba, which I recommend to anybody who comes to Okinawa, and then we stop by Futima Shrine on our way home to say our prayers and receive new Omamori and Omikuji, or protection amulets and fortunes. Hi, Sai. It's Julian from Oregon. For my family, we mostly celebrate on January 1st and make ozoni soup. Uh, so for pretty much all of my life, we've had a big gathering at my great grandparents house, um, where everyone would come and like work together to make ozoni soup together. I usually came after the preparation was done cause I was a little kid, but as I was older, I think when I was about either 18 or 17 or 18, maybe a little younger, um, they got a bit too old to be able to host it because my great-grandparents were like in their 90s. Um, so I took it upon myself to host New Year's celebrations um, for my friends. What I would do is I'd make ozone soup and get some mikan for people to eat and everyone would come over and I'd feed them and it was great. And I've been trying to do it every year since then. I haven't been able to do it every year because every year to the same magnitude because of COVID, obviously, but um, it's something important to me. Um, and doubly so, I uh, recently, unfortunately, lost both of my great-grandparents in August and July, respectively. So it's really important for me to have a good New Year's this year in their memories. It's a very important holiday for me, and it helps me personally feel connected to my ancestors and tradition and stuff. Um, last year, I also made my own kagami mochi uh, and uh, for the first time I also made the mochi that goes in the soup as well as like some dango for myself for the first time ever and I'm really proud of it. I hope I can do it this year as well. Uh, I also want to try making other osechi because um, like with my family we only really had ozoni soup and I'd like to try other stuff. But yeah, thanks for hosting this and uh, happy New Year's to everybody. Thank you, Julian, Marcellus, and Hanako for sharing your traditions with us. Stay tuned till the ending fun fact segment, where we'll share even more Shimachu New Year's stories. Hi, Chai, everyone. Welcome to episode seven of the Ichari Bachode podcast. Wane Emma Yaibin. My name is Emma, and today I will be your co-host alongside Mariko. Hi, Tai Gusio. Today, we will be covering Uchina Suguachi, or the Okinawan New Year, and we are joined by the lovely Eric Wada Shinshi. Uh, Eric was born and raised in Honolulu on the island of Oahu. He studied Ryukyun dance in Honolulu and then was encouraged by his own Shinshi to continue in Okinawa under Iemoto and Tamagusuku Setsuko Shinshi, the founder of the Tamagusuku Ryu Shoshetsu Kai. He received all three awards of excellence through the Ryukyu Shinpo Gai no Konkuru Performing Arts Competition. He also established a place of learning or Kenkyujo for Ryukyu dance under the name Tamagusuku Ryu Shosetsu Kai Hawaii. Eric Shinshi is a recipient of the Kiyoshi and Shihan teaching certificates from Okinawa. He's also a recipient of the Okinawa government sponsored Kempi Ryugaku scholarship to study at the Okinawa Performing Arts University in Shuri. And later on, Eric co-founded the Ukwanshin Kabudan Performing Arts Group with Norman Kan Kaneshiro Shinshi to provide education of Luchuan culture through the performing arts. And currently, Eric is a Hawaiian Studies Research Teacher for the Department of Education for the State of Hawaii. Currently, Eric is back in school at the University of Hawaii at Hilo, working towards degrees in Indigenous Language Revitalization and Education. 
Wow, all such incredible accomplishments. We are so honored to be speaking with you today, Eric. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, David. This is your あ、ご視聴ありがとうございました。あ、ご視聴ありがとうございました。あ、ご視聴ありがとうございました。あ、ご視聴ありがとうございました。あ、ご視聴ありがとうございました。あ、ご視聴ありがとうございました。あ、
So this follows the, the old calendar. Well, I don't like to call it old, but the lunar or, or what some people call also the Chinese calendar. Um, so that understanding that the lunar calendar is not the Gregorian calendar that most of us follow. You know? mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna look at how it, it's important to Okinawa culture and spirituality. Um, and then is the new year observed on the same date every day? Um, and then also just a note that um, Japan is, is pretty much the only Asian country right now that does not officially observe the lunar new mm. year. Um, it was abolished, um, uh, the, the use of it was abolished um, in 1873 at the beginning of the Meiji restoration. Um, there may be still pockets of the country area where they still do um, uh, observe the Lunar New Year, but um, generally um, it's not it's not observed. Um, Okinawa still refers to the lunar calendar um, a lot um, due to their cultural and spiritual practices. Yeah. Um, so you asked about the Chinese zodiac signs too. Um, uh, or, or the difference yeah, between the, the, the Japanese and the, the Okinawan. So mm -hmm. um, one of the similarities is, is the Chinese Zodiac, um, which is pretty much followed um, by uh, most of the Asian countries, um, Korea, China. Um, and it's the 12 different signs. Um, and it's, uh, you kind of got to look at when you were born, um, especially if your birthday is in January and February, um, because the lunar calendar changes every year. It's not the same. And sometimes it's like this year, it's um, February 1st, which is kind of in the earlier part um, where it goes sometimes past um, past the second or the, or the middle of February um, in, in the later um, times, yeah. So again, check your, your, um, your birth month on the year that you were born to really find out um, what, the, what animal sign you are for the Chinese zodiac. And this year we'll be celebrating the year of the tiger, correct? Yes, yeah. yeah. Which is our very own Mariko. <laughs> I am year of tiger. So hopefully that means something good for me this year. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. oh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that at the when we get to the part when of the we get there. Part. <laughs> okay. well, I want to know everybody else's um, zodiac signs too, if if anybody feels like sharing. Um, but I'm year of the ox, so I will be transitioning out. <laughs> oh, hey. Of my year. Oh. Wow. Oh. Passing the torch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, how about you, Eric Shinchi? Um, I'm snake. Oh, wood snake. Oh, wood snake. Yeah. That's fascinating. Well, well, I think we'll dive into that a little bit later with the element and the um, and the zodiac sign. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, so continuing on, um, how does one typically prepare for the Uchinasu Gachi? Um, so the preparation um, begins um, about a week to two weeks out um, from the new year. Um, so it's like, like the regular, how everybody usually, I guess, prepares for new year. Um, you want to make sure that you go into the new year clean so like clean the house and yard um, by the beginning of the so-called spring so this again is is usually on the lunar calendar um, the, the the first day of spring um, according to the lunar calendar um, sometimes it's maybe a week out sometimes it's um, at, even after the new year it depends but um, usually, at least before the, the the very day of the new year, you clean and make sure that everything is is um, is nice and and you know you don't have like rubbish and, and stuff around. Um, you wipe down the the what people call the butsudang or the totome, um, our ancestral um, shrines. Um, 
Also, any kind of pictures or images of the guardians um, uh, and get rid of clutter, like things that you really don't need around the house anymore um, that you haven't touched for a couple of years or, you know, to get rid of it um, and, and get rid of that. Um, they look at it as kind of like negative energy um, that's kind of stagnant within the house. So to get rid of it, if you don't need it. Um, throw out old things, um, especially if you have like um, dried up plants in the house <laughs> that didn't <laughs> mm -hmm. survive for the year or, you know, those kinds of things. And then also fix up broken areas um, like, you know, squeaky doors. Um, if you have screens on your, uh, on your windows to fix any broken screens, um, creaky um, uh, uh, creaky floors or, or, or stairs um, or even like chip paint um, and things like that to kind of fix those things up and get things um, in order um, to greet the new year. You, there, you said well, uh, there was a different Okinawan word for um, butsudan. Could you, could you say that again? Otome. Otome. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. yeah. Love to. I, 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 yeah, please. Yeah, Totome refers to the um the ancestral um actually our, our it's like your genealogy tablets. Mm. Um because for most of us who are in diaspora, um most of us I think don't have that. Um mm. our 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 grandparents have Butsudang because they became Buddhist. Um and so the Butsudang actually is a Buddhist altar. Um uh, Okinawans are not are not generally Buddhist per se. Um, it's more um, ancestral honoring ancestors. Um, so the main thing in the house is the is the totome, um, which, which has the the genealogy of the family. Yeah. Thank you. So the um, the New Year's decorations um, that you also prepare um, for. Um, Again, this is different from the Japanese um, New Year. Um, it, and again, I like to uh, reiterate that customs differ from place to place. So there might be a different custom where your great grandparents or your grandparents come from um, in Ichinaya. Um, but one of the things is um, is the the tan or the charcoal and the kubu or the seaweed, the kelp. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's displayed. Um, and then also rice stalks, um, pine branches, and also the sang or the, the um, it's kind of like a slip knot, uh, like, like leaves, long leaves that are tied into like a um, slip knot. Um, also mounds of oranges, um, sata and dagi, um, and other sweets, uh, muchi, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and also picture or images of um, the Chinese guardian. Um, I'm not sure what he's called in, in Okinawa, but um, the, the Chinese name that some of them use, especially those from Shuri, is the Guanggong. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the New Year, they, they they write New Year uh, yuka or poem um, on red paper and also um, good luck wishes. Yeah. Um, so I have some pictures here uh, for those of you who can access the YouTube um, of some of these things. So um, most of us, you know, they we we know the the um, the the Japanese style of you know the display of the, the big mochi, the, the, the big one and then the small one on top with the tangerine on mm -hmm. top of it. Like yeah, and then other, other yeah, the, the kagami mochi. Um, but in Okinawa, um, that's not really um, a, a, an Okinawan thing. So mm -hmm. um, their, their, uh, their main um, display is what you see in the slide on the right side. So um, there's lacquered boxes, or I've also seen it um, just 
um, uh, the Okinawa regular lacquerware, like a round tray or bowl filled with mm -hmm. uncooked rice um, to represent abundance. And then on top of it is the charcoal that's wrapped with, um, with the kubu, with, with the kombu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so this this charcoal is not barbecue charcoal now. It's um <laughs> it's the uh, um, um it's used a lot in um in like uh, for for filtering or even to clean. I, I've seen it oh, put into like the bathrooms or, or things like that to to help mm -hmm. to clean the air. And also people use it uh, you know after you use it for this decoration. Um, you can also um, put it into your um, your your water, um, and also in your like um, I have a Keurig um, that I put it into the water um, uh, water water tank area to to help keep the water clean. And then also I've seen people um, put it into the uh, rice cooker when they're cooking rice. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Very versatile. <laughs> I know. I'm yeah. Like, How do I get one? <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah, I've, I don't, I've yeah. seen it um, sold at um, here in, in Honolulu. I've seen the that kind of charcoal um, at Don Quixote. Mm. I don't know if you guys have it up uh, um, in the continent. I do. We do it in um, LA. Yeah, oh. some of the, the Japanese stores <laughs> might actually have this kind of charcoal. It's cool. We'll make sure that we link it in the show notes. We'll find some and 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 make sure that everybody can get their cleansing <laughs> charcoal for wherever you need cleansing. <laughs> Be the yeah, right so you, can, <laughs> you can just wrap around the um wrap, wrap the the red paper, some kind of red paper around and you can write your own character for long life or good luck or something like that. Um, and then put it on top of the rice. Um, so usually it's um, it's one charcoal for the, the main family, if for the house. Um, and then if you're displaying um, for the totome or for the butsudang, um, it's, um, it's two, I believe. And then if it's for the, um, like what you see on the left side for the um, the fire god or the kitchen god, um, the uh, the hinukang, um, you use three, and it's there that also you offer the um, the white small um, komochi, yeah. So that one doesn't have any filling in it, yeah. Mm. And so the also the the symbolism of of the tan and kubu. The tan represents um, the the fire, um, the brightness um, for the new year. Um, also, it reminds us of um, how everybody comes together um, around light and fire, you know, to celebrate things and and stuff like that. Um, the kubu is used because of the sound of that word kubu um, that comes from that that they connect to the word, um, um, the Japanese word yorokobu, or to mm -hmm. mean to be happy, to represent happiness, yeah. And then these are pictures of the, uh, the, the branches, uh, the pine branches, and also the um, rice stalks. Um, so again, we don't do like um, um, the, the pine and the, the bamboo, um, decorations. Um, for Okinawa, they um, displayed the, the, um, the pine branches that they um, add, you know, flowers or, or things like that and make an arrangement um, because the pine represents the, the evergreen um, that represents um, strength, um, endurance, also um, um, youthfulness. Yeah. Um, and then the, the rice stalks, um, again, represents abundance, hope for um, abundance in the new year. Also, um, because if you look at rice stalks, when it, when it um, gets to this, where the rice is ready to be harvested, um, as, it's, it's, um, as the rice is, is becoming mature, it starts to bend. 
um, mm. bend over. Um, which reminds us to always be humble, no matter how how much we have. Oh, that's so yeah. beautiful. Um, and then this is the guardian um, guanggong um, that some of the houses uh, put into their um, alcoves mm. um, to um, bring in the new year. And then um, these are some examples of the. Um, the the different kinds of writings to welcome the new year nowadays we see more of the chinese ones um but in okinawa they do write it on scrolls um like what you see on the right side um for good luck um also um again writing um, okinawan poems or ryuka um to welcome in the new year also yeah and then also putting up other scrolls um, with pictures of the dragon or um, dragon phoenix, um, some of those animals that represent good luck. And these scrolls are placed on the butsudan or in the house? Um, no, in al alcoves or someplace in the house where you're mm. going to have your, your New Year's decorations. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's actually, it's, it's, um, I don't know, for, for me, um, because I do celebrate both at our house, um, it's actually cheaper to do the Okinawan um, <laughs> um, decorations because um, it's, it's more accessible to you know, get things. And um, uh, the, the, the mochi here is, is really expensive, the kagami mochi. Yeah. Um, and there's always so, a wait list because my family does that as well. You have to get on the wait list and then wait, yeah, get, get up yeah. really early to get your kagami mochi. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, Eric Shinji, can you also walk us through the New Year's Eve and the different kinds of food offerings that are prepared? Speaking of mochi. <laughs> okay. So um, the once we get you know, you have your house ready and, and all decorated and cleaned out. Um, New Year's Eve, you start preparing and offering food to the ancestors and to the family. Um, so the food, um, traditionally, um, it included um, some kind of fish, um, some kind of fowl. Usually in Okinawa, it was chicken. Um, and then um, uh, pork and then sweets also. Um, the reason why you have the fish, um, uh, chicken and pork is because it represents the three different um, spaces. So like the, the fish representing the ocean, um, the, the fall representing the sky, yeah. and then the, the pork representing the land. Yeah, so you have um, these, these um, like, ancestors or, or these these parts that you're going to um, nourish yourself with from the three different um, spaces um, that surround us. Um, and then, of course, sweets to represent happiness. Um, and just a just a note, you know, that everybody thinks Okinawans eat pork all the time or eat, you know, some kind of meat all the time. But um, in, in the old days, um, meat was only eaten for special occasions as well as sweets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't any kind of um, like how everybody makes sata and dagi and eats that all the time. That was only made during, during happy occasions, yeah, special occasions. Um, and then pork was, was kept um, to be eaten at only a certain, um, special occasions. Yeah. So usually around this time too is um, way back traditionally is when the village um, people who raised pigs would slaughter the pigs prior to the new year um, and then distribute the meat. Um, and the people would, it, you know, in, in, in the old days, didn't have refrigerators, so they would um, preserve the meat um, in, in, in these uh, barrels or, or containers where they would salt the meat um, and keep it until they would, uh, they would need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then another um, uh, one of the traditions um, um, 
was to um, eat half of the fish, one side of the fish um, on the eve, and then to um, eat the rest of the fish on the day, on New Year's Day. So it would be like a connection into the, into the next year. Yeah. Wow. Um, also um, to offer the corners of the, of the yard or property, um, you would offer um, some kind of food like mochi and, and a piece of the, the pork um, usually. Um, and that would be like for the, the spirits that are wandering um, that might cause mischief um, for them to have something to celebrate and eat. Um, so they don't come into your your space um, and also to thank the um from what i was told in, a, in another area um um that it was to thank the the four directions um wow. for the for the year and also to bring to help bring in the new year too um and then um uh, 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 um influence um, that was borrowed from, from China was um, the use of firecrackers. Um, and Okinawa still uses firecrackers today actually for a lot of their um, celebrations. Um, so firecrackers are used um, for, um, especially when there's, um, there's ancestors um, or um, for these kinds of celebrations when you're celebrating like um, a, a new um, beginning and things like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then also there was the three days um, that you didn't do any work. So even to clean the house, um, you would they would put the brooms away um, and not use any anything to clean um, for three days. Um, of course, you would if you had dishes and stuff like that, you would clean the dishes. But then, as far as like sweeping out things or or, or doing things like that. Um, uh, to keep in whatever good luck comes in during the year, um, you wouldn't want to be sweeping anything out. Yeah, so you would also want to rest and enjoy the three days, um, especially in the old days where you work so hard throughout the whole year. Yeah, to enjoy the three days. I love that. I'm gonna make sure that I rest for three full days. <laughs> It's really important. <laughs> Once we enter the new year, I understand that celebrations can last for up to 20 days. Could you share yeah, what happens on these special days and the different rituals that take place? Yeah, so the word actually, if we look at the word for new year, um, so Yeah, um, it's again, another difference from the Japanese um, where the Japanese is, do you guys know how to what, what the Japanese is for New Year? I don't no, know. I don't. <laughs> um, so I just shin know, yeah, shin, shin nen. Yeah, so New New Year, basically just New Year, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but for Okinawa, this sogachi actually means um, the month of January. Mm -hmm. um, so they call it Soguachi because throughout pretty much most of the first month, the lunar month, um, or, or Janu the, the January of the lunar month, um, you have celebrations or observances throughout the whole month. Um, so that, that whole month is like uh, um, a, uh, observance of the, of the new year. So the whole month is called Soguachi. So it's not um, it's not like how Japanese call it, um, um, you know, the, the first month. Yeah, um, it's it's just Sogachi, which which mm. means the new year for the whole month. Yeah. Mm. Um, the so on the on the New Year's Day, um, from early in the morning, um, they we have what we call the um, Waka, waka michi tui. Um, there's also the wakamitsi tui, um, the hinukang ugami, um, and then the, the where the children offer tea to the elders. So 
we start off with the with the wakamiji tui where we go where traditionally um the young um members of the house the, the children would go to the um the the main spring or well for the village and they would get the first water for the year um and this water would be taken back to the house and um they would make um the tea um the and offer it to their um, grandparents and their parents um, for the new year to celebrate the new year. And in return, they would receive the Iriching or uh, the new year good luck money. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, you would go out and um, um, gather your wakamichi or your, um, your, um, your pine branches. Um, to display in the house to represent the, the coming of the new year. And, um, and then the, the, usually the, the female of the house who was in charge of the Hinukang or the kitchen god um, would go and do the first um, prayers and offerings um, to the kitchen god for the new year and then go to the totome um, to announce to the ancestors on um, the new year and also to um, to pray for the, the family for the rest of the year. Yeah. The, okay, so these are just some pictures um, for those of you who are, are with us on YouTube um, of the Wakamichi Tui. So on the mm. top left side is the village. Um, they're gathering the water from the springs. Um, again, um, springs and water is very important um, in, like in any indigenous culture where water is the most important thing because if there's no water, there's no life for anything. And this is what our ancestors understood and that's why the springs are considered sacred. And it's like um, gathering water or, or like um, the nourishment from the mother. Um, because um, the, in, in the old days too, the, the land was also referred to as Amma or mother, mm -hmm. um, because that's where everything was born from. And they also understood that everything was born from water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in Okinawa, um, the villages were all created around the springs. Um, if you go to Okinawa still, um, many of the first villages that um, were established all have the word kawa at the end of it or ga yeah like mm -hmm. gush, gush cha or gush kawa ishikawa yeah um, so those are th those are the names of the first or the the areas where these springs came up from um, and um, the the um the way the water comes in or the fresh water is made in okinawa is um not like here in hawaii where the water starts from our mountains um from the rain in the mountains and the and the, the plants and the and the clouds um gathering the the moisture um up in the elevation and comes down um because okinawa doesn't have tall mountains um and it's coral islands. The water is filtered through the coral from the sides and it comes up in the middle of the island in different places in, in these fresh uh, water springs. Um, so these are very, very important. And this is why it's, they, they had this observance. And I was told that this observance predates the, the Chinese influence of the lunar calendar um, new year or the Sogachi, yeah. Um, they had they had this this observance and this um, this kind of if you want to call it rituals um, um, to go to the water god um, or the springs the freshwater springs um, to to honor and to respect and uh, to um, to remind themselves actually that water is the most important thing for everybody. Okay, so the Hachikushi is the third day. Um, Hachikushi means actually the first day that you go back and you can do stuff. Um, so 
uh, the traditionally the first day to put tools back into the soil, like you could go fishing again, and you know, the, the, or the fishermen went out to go fishing again, and etc. Um, during the kingdom period, the king would do his greeting and offer prayers for the for Luchu for the whole country, um, and the people, and for himself, um, as well as giving thanks um, to the gods and to the ancestors um, for the the past year, and then also um, for uh, them to watch over us during the new year. Yeah. Um, so again, those of you who are joining us on the, the YouTube, um, here's some pictures of um, what they had brought back um, to um, Suigusku or to the Shigi Palace um, uh, to reenact um, the this um, New Year tradition of the, the king um, doing his um, first greetings and also the most important thing was to pray for the, the people and for the country. Yeah. So you can see it's it's it looks very Chinese and, and mm. all of the um the the uh like some of the prayers, some of the chants that they did were in the Chinese language. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So cool. Yeah, definitely. For those of you that are on listening, definitely either come to the uh, the show notes or check it out on YouTube because these are some fascinating photos. Wow, it's so it's so rich. Yeah. So even though um, uh, the 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 palace burnt down, um, mm -hmm. they are still trying to um to do these um these observances unfortunately um this observance in okinawa has become a tourist attraction mm. more than than going back and doing a ritual because they've mm. they've um they do this um for the the regular new year not not the the lunar oh, new year interesting yeah. oh, that's unfortunate <laughs> yeah that's because at that time, it's the it's it's a big um, like um, uh, vacation time in, in yeah. Japan and, and yes. holiday. Um, yeah. So a lot of tourists go to Okinawa, and um, so to to kind of latch on to that time, mm -hmm. um, they have it during the regular New Year rather than on the Lunar New Year. You know? hmm. I love seeing these photos though, because yeah, like you said, there's so much tied to Chinese culture. And I think it sort of reminds us how, yeah, Luchu was very distant from Japan at the time and was for a good amount of its history. Uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to remember, I think, especially, um, you know, in, in Okinawa right now, the, the younger generation don't have that education. Um, so what they're what they're pushing right now in Okinawa, and especially in the last election um, a month ago, um, they're, they're the 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 LDP party to get them to to go against the the pro Okinawa um, um, contingent um, is pushing this idea that China is bad, and um, that. Mm -hmm. Um, they need they need military bases in in Okinawa to protect Okinawa from the, the Chinese, um, but you know that that's that's not that's not true. Yeah, I mean even if they were a tributary state of China, if we see um, you know Okinawa, they they were allowed to to do their their um, cultural practices, keep their language, right. um, and, and all of this didn't change until Japan came in. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it was the Japanese who really erased a lot of our, our culture and our, our language. Mm -hmm. um, so the fourth day of the, of the new year is the Hinukang Unke, or the, the, um, the day that we welcome back the, um, the, the kitchen god, yeah. So um, welcoming the kitchen god um, with prayers and offerings, um, so the kitchen god is important 
And again, there's an influence from Chinese, but there's also the idea that that was um, connected to this even prior to the, the influence of, of the so-called kitchen god or the Hinukang, where in the ancient days, um, they would um, they believe that there was a spirit within the kitchen, uh, within the hearth, or within the 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 the, the fire that that was kept um, in the kitchen. Um, and I know that those of us who have converted to Christianity or or don't believe these kinds of things, um, you can also look at it as um, the way that our ancestors. Um, in the ancient days, um, you know, in, in any, any culture, if you look at the very beginnings, that fire was very important. Mm. Fire was important for cooking. It was important for light. And this is why they honored this, this energy. Um, so I, I don't like to call it a god <laughs> or um, a deity. I, I just call it an energy um, that's important to everybody. Yeah. Mm. Um, and this is a way that they, they honored this energy um, that reminded them of um, this element, yeah, that is actually a natural element, um, and that it came, it, it helped in, in in the heating during the cold season, which is during this time, um, and also gave light, um, because again, at this time is when the nights are longer, yeah. Um, so all kinds of things, you know, that that. We don't think about nowadays, um, but which was was very um, natural for them to to be observant about, um, you know, prior to to modernization. Yeah, um, so that's that's the importance of of the kitchen god is to remind ourselves of this element um, that we need this element, yeah, for um, for part of our sustenance. Um, Again, only the women would take care of the kitchen god or the hinukang um, because the women are the ones who hold that spiritual energy. Um, and um, it, it comes also from the very beginning of if, if we go back um, to talk about um, the, the creation um, story of Luchu and where we come from, um, the women's genealogy is very powerful and it comes directly from the, from that creation story. Um, Hinukang is sent back um, every year on the lunar December 24th. Yeah, so mm. the lunar 24th. Um, so um, actually today is, today is the, the lunar um, December 1st. Um, the new moon, yeah. Yeah, so, um, wait, December? Oh, I'm sorry, November, sorry, sorry. So today's the, the, um, the first of November. So if you guys count, it's 30 days. Yeah, and you can figure out the December 24th. Oh. I'm looking at that, yeah. So November 1st on the lunar calendar today. Mm. And um, quick question, when you, um, when you say the Hinukan is sent back, where is it sent back to? So he gets um, sent back, he, he goes back up to heaven and mm -hmm. um, supposedly reports, um, reports to, the, um, to, um, to the, the, the God um, of the, what, what happened during the year uh -huh. um, in the family. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's why they offer, um, they offer uh, sweets. Um, to the Hinukang at this time to to kind of bribe him. To kind of say that, uh, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> here's some good stuff so that don't don't talk bad about us. Right. When you go back. <laughs> Keep everybody happy. Everything's good here. <laughs> okay, now <Right>. go back. <laughs> Thank you. I love that visual. <laughs> yeah. So the next next one to uh, that they celebrate is the Tushibi. Um, which is the the day for the like um, who's gonna be the tiger this year? Well, that's me. <laughs> oh, 
So um, for, for the tiger people this year, um, you would look on the lunar calendar and see the first day because each day is represented by one of the zodiac signs. Mm -hmm. um, so the first tiger day is the Tushibi. And all of the people who are born in the year of the tiger would celebrate that day. It would be like everybody celebrating your birthday on the, on the same day. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the important things is the Tushibi, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for that sign. So the, the tiger people all celebrate at the same time on the first day of the tiger um, for that year. Um, then comes the, the, the 16th day of the new year, which is the Juruku uh, Nichi or the 16th new year day. Um, this day is also called the Guso Nuso Gwachi. Yeah. Um, Guso is, it means like the ancestors or, or the, the other side the other realm, yeah, um, the spiritual realm. Um, and this is the, their New Year's Day. Um, so food is prepared and offered and, and um, to the Totome again. Um, but also on this day um, in, in different places, uh, like in, in the village of, Mot of Bise in Motobu, where my, uh, my, mom's mother's side is from um they also do they this is the the day that they go to the um the grave and have that big picnic with all the food um as to where other parts of of okinawa um celebrate this during the spring um um oh i just got a blank on um they they call it the uh, in, in chinese it's Qingming. um but for yes yeah, shimi yeah oh, oh interesting yeah huh yeah so this is the more ancient practice um prior to the influence of the chinese um everybody did um did the jurukunichi instead of the shimi mm. yeah huh. Then came the, then this is the last, uh, the last celebration is on the, um, the 20th. So the Hachikaso Gachi. So this is another one where um, the sweets are eaten, leftovers are eaten. Um, the decorations are start, start to take, you start to take those down and you clean up. Um, and then again, you offer prayers to the Hinukang and Totome for Thanksgiving and to continue to watch over the house and family for the year. Uh, also, uh, in, in our history, there was the Jiru Mam uh, Agai, where the, the Judy or what are called the closest thing I can think of is like their like geisha. Um, geisha hostesses um, within especially the Naha area, um, they, they went out and did a celebration and prayers um, at this time on, on this day, on the 20th of the lunar calendar um, to thank the villages for um, like, I guess, putting up with, with their business um, because they relied a lot on the community too. Um, so people look at the Judy as like, or, or the places that they, they were at, um, so-called tea houses. If you if you ever go back and and look at the the movie Tea House of the August Moon, that was a, a place where the Judy came from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there were these hostels um, where the the men in the old days when they came into Naha to do business, um, because if you came from the north or from another island, um, you would have to travel. Um, and you needed a place to stay, so they would stay in these hostels, um, and the Judy would take care of them. So it would be like their second wife. Um, so not really like um, some people label them as prostitutes, but it's not really in that sort of sense. It's more like a, actually being a second wife. They would do the laundry for them. They would they would. Um, feed them, they would entertain them with um, music and dance. Um, I mean, you could go into another another whole presentation about the Judy. Um, 
they they also were usually um, um, women who were brought up from a very young age um, because the, in the countryside and and you know other places families didn't have a lot of money so if they had um, you know um, a, a girl or or too many daughters um, and the rest of the family couldn't um, adopt them or or um, um, yeah, ado adopt them, then they would sell their daughters to the Judy house um, where they would, they, they were, they knew that they would be educated and they would be, they would have clothes, they would have food, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, the, the 20th is, is also known as, as this Judy Maagai where they went out into the streets and they danced and um, this, this, this um this dance with a with a horse um, to represent um, you know the new year and and um, and uh, what the horse represents as far as um, um, strength and endurance and and um, you know that kind of thing too. So um, this this was kind of um, it kind of like died in the seventies I would say because of a women's feminist movement that came up, but the performing arts teachers, especially one of them um, started it up again. Um, mm -hmm. So I have some pictures of it. So again, this is only in the Naha area because the Judy were only known to be within the Naha area. I think they started to bring back this, this Judy Uma um, parade or this celebration again. Um, this one is still done on the lunar calendar. Well, these are really beautiful photos, and um, I I did not know about the Judy at all, and so I, I would love to learn more about them. And again, not knowing terribly much about it, I think it's really wonderful that they had a whole day dedicated to them, um, or like they had a, a and a, it sounds like a you know a, a significant role in the in bringing in the new year, um, which I think is beautiful. Yeah. Own way, yeah. So this is only only within the Naha area, yeah. Um, so everybody would celebrate the the twentieth um, of the lunar calendar with their things that they did at home, but this was one of the the nice colorful things because this was one of the days that that the Judy came out, um, and then they were not allowed to go back to their families, yeah? yeah. So this was one of the days actually that their families, from wherever they were, would come into Naha. And they would be along the streets and be able to see their their daughters. It's a little bit sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah little, uh, like, that's yeah. A, I, yeah uh, hearing it in that lens, it's, it sounds complicated, and and I could see how a feminist movement would want to um, push that out. Uh, but yeah, I, I yeah. will task myself with learning more. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, if you if you if you look at it as far as like um, it, in our in our indigenous sense, mm -hmm. um, not in a in a in a Western sense, mm -hmm. that it was neat. It was something that was that they had to do, or they felt they had to do, and that their their daughters were brought up um, very well educated. They mm -hmm. they were educated in history and in culture, um, you know, in the arts. Um, and they knew um, about the, you know, the, the, they could even read the star maps, mm -hmm. um, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and, and because the families didn't have that money or they, they felt that they couldn't afford to raise a child, um, it was, it was their, they were glad to see this child grow up and be able to be healthy and, um, mm -hmm you know, have, have this kind of life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So there's about, there, there's kind of both sides uh, yeah. and, and it is, it is kind of sad. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to get into the other parts of the yes, celebration? Please. Yeah. Let's pivot over to, um, we've got the Shisa lion dances. Yeah. So the Shisa Moi or the lion dances were also done, um, around this time, usually after the, the new year. Um, and again, nowadays we see a lot of Shisa performances, even in Okinawa done all kinds of times. Um, so there's just like um, Yesa, 
there's the entertainment ESA, and there's the traditional, yeah, the 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 very traditional, um, because. The shisa or the lion is actually um, a guardian for each, they, each village had their own. And again, this came, this is an influence from China, but we see it all over Asia. So we, we, there's also, you know, some studies that say maybe it wasn't just from China. Um, there's, because there are shisa within Luchu that looks like they have influences um, just by the way they look and by the, by the way they do things or the music, um, that it, it could come from other parts of Southeast Asia or Korea, yeah, not only China. But um, they're very respected in the villages and they're, they're kept in shrines um, and only brought out um, in certain times of the year. It's not like, okay, it's my, my baby's birthday or it's our wedding or you know that kind of thing can you can you do this for them um it's because it's considered like um a celestial being um and a guardian god um you don't bring it out um whenever you want to yeah there's certain times where it comes out um so again th this is one thing um that that was um that was done um and still done today too in some of the villages. Yeah, I'm just gonna say, I think it's fascinating the amount of complexity within uh, Uchina Soguachi. Like we pay respect to the Shisa, but then we also pay respect to the kitchen god or the ocean through how we get our water and having certain days correlated with that too is very special. Um, I think it, it it's a testament to the amount of care and like thought you put into bringing in the new year and reflecting on the new year as well. Yeah, yeah, busy, busy. <laughs> <laughs> we need those three days off, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, you had you had mentioned when we first met that uh, feng shui plays like, an important role in the new year. Um, maybe you could explain to our listeners what exactly feng shui is and its relevance to suguachi. Yeah, um, so Feng Shui or Fu Sui um, is um, another influence again from the close ties with, with China, but they were also doing um, similar things prior to um, contact with China. And, and this, um, they just kind of, uh, they, they're finding just recent evidence um, from ancient sites that, that they're uncovering or looking at now and seeing that it, it outdates the contact from, from China. Um, so um, Feng Shui has to do with, it, it's not like some people call it a religion or, or like um, a, a, a cult practice or like, um, like magic, um, it's, it's I, from the way that I see it, um, I just look at it as looking at at common sense um, in in energy placement or or in taking care of yourself. Yeah. So Fusui or Feng Shui is connected to the lunar calendar and ceremonies throughout the year. Um, again, is it superstition? For some people, it is. Um, Using feng shui is, is, again, common sense, and it keeps things in place and helps to avoid clutter. Um, and it's part of the New Year Zodiac. So again, the, um, the, the animals in the, in the Chinese Zodiac it, um, are part of feng shui um, because we look at um, you know, the, wh what year it is. And, um, and I know Mariko is asking, you know, I ho hope it's a good year. Um, usually, um, that's what a lot of people think is that if it's your year, it's a good luck year. But usually, um, according to the Chinese Feng Shui, um, it's usually uh, a year that you really have to watch out. Um, so again, if you go by common sense, it's kind of like, okay, this is my year. People like to think that the year is going to be great for you and, and that you can it's it's like your lucky number coming up 
but um, actually it's a reminder um, to be careful, um, to take care of yourself, e extra careful. And, you know, like placement of things. Um, so one thing in, in Okinawa, um, if you go and look at the graves, all the graves um, are pretty much facing the ocean. Yeah. You never have a grave facing the mountain. Um, and the reason for that is because, again, that belief of um, that the, the, the water is, is important, that when we, when we die, we go back to the mother, to our earth again. Um, so because we're born from water, yeah, um, that, that if, if we think that we are born from water when we're in the womb, um, the first place that we live in is water. Mm. Yeah, so we go back to that water. So the, the, um, the, the graves all face the ocean. Um, plus the, the area of, of Nirai Kanai or the spiritual realm is also believed to be beyond the horizon. Yeah. I'm um, curious, what are, so some, again, are there any minor like practices of Feng Shui that someone just getting into it could start to do in the new year? Oh, there's actually a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, part of it is, Part of, part of it is is the cleaning of the house, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's that's all part of Feng Shui too, you know, cleaning the house, making sure that things are in place. Um, because basically, you know, again, I look at it as common sense. Like if you have too many things and it's cluttered, there's more chances of you falling over something and getting hurt. That's not bad luck. Mm -hmm. It's just that you didn't, clean or you didn't put things away yeah also um color looking for your your the, the color that's that's um that that'll bring you um more good luck i guess mm -hmm. if you want to look at it that way um but again when i look at the colors too you know it, it there are colors that that you're 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 um you're connected with but then, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna decorate someplace, especially for the first month of the year, I know you most people wouldn't want to use black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you want the new year to be to be bright um, and colorful and and happy. Um, so you know, doing something like that, and also again, when we look at the the, the time of the year, um, where the the nights the the, the, the night is long, yeah. Uh, more so you want to bring in something and, and then continental U.S. Are, are places where you have snow or it gets cold. Um, you don't have the green and, and, and all of that around you. Um, so, you know, decorating your home with flowers, with, with things mm -hmm. like that um, already brings positive energy, you mm -hmm. know, into that space. Yeah. So that's a good way of, of actually beginning um feng shui yeah can i ask a follow-up question to something you said earlier um you mentioned um uh offerings to the corners of the property and how it might relate to the four directions and i thought that was really fascinating and then that that practice predates sort of the um chinese influence um I was wondering if you could speak to that just just a little bit um, in relation to the feng shui. Yeah. So um, again, it's it's not only the the energy within your house that you wanna um, you wanna make sure is positive and and that moves uh, moves nicely. You also want to make sure that the outside. Yeah. So like um, your yard, you don't want to you don't want like dead branches around and, and you want to make sure your, your yard is clean, the, the plants are doing well, uh, plants that are not doing well, you get rid of, um, you know, those kinds of things. So the, the four corners, um, again, is, is just to make sure that um, they believe that, um, especially corners or dark spaces are where um, like the, the more mischievous, um, energy or spirits would would be attracted to um, so you offer things there 
to keep them happy um, and so that they don't come into your space and, and bother you. Because I guess it's like, um, it, it's like saying like, um, okay, I, I'm going to have a party and the rest of the people around me are not going to have anything and I'm going to eat the best food and everybody around me is not going to, you know, you're not going to share with anybody else. So it, 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 because you're doing so much during the year and, and you're bringing in the year and you're making all this food, um, it's good to remember the ones who don't have that, op that, that kind of opportunity or even those who don't have families because families have forgotten about them. Um, that you offer this, you know, to the four corners so that those spirits, you know, have something. Thank yeah. you. So that's also done during Obong too. Um, when, you know, during um, Ukui, when you send your ancestors back, um, there's a small offering that you leave outside too for those um, yes. spirits who, who don't have families who take care of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for, for Feng Shui, I would suggest, um, you know, that there's a lot that, that can be covered for Feng Shui. Um, and it's just, um, you know, there's, I think, in different parts of the continental U.S., you know, you guys have, um, the, it's become pretty popular. Um, so, you know, you can look for your own um, resources that you have in your area. But I would go more with, um, with a Chinese um, um, resource um, because there are like new age kind of stuff that kind of tries to imitate um, Feng Shui. Um, and there are good resources too, I would say on like YouTube or online also, if you ever need to, you know. Yeah, so that kind of brings us down to, uh, to the wrapping up um, of talking about Sogachi. Um, that it's basically like everything else um, for Okinawans. Um, it's a time to reflect, think of the past and look at what you can do for the future um, to reestablish and continue connections with others and to set goals for yourself, you know, what you want to accomplish for that year and then to continue the values and make time to reflect. It's really important or it was really important for our ancestors to get together with the family or bring the family together again to share and reestablish values and then reflect about our ancestors. What happened? You know, how did grandma grow up? You know, those kinds of things. And that's how stories get passed down and remembered. And then um, the Lunar New Year and New Year observances are, are time to connect to our ancestors and to our identity, to really think of where we come from, our roots. Um, so, you know, in, in a Western sense, I think, um, and, and some people might not agree with me, but I think in a Western sense for holidays and, and things like that, it's a very um, self-centered thing a lot of times. Like if we look at Christmas, who do you buy gifts for? Or, or you know, like gifts are for people, but what is the real story? of Christmas yeah is it really getting something and and, and going out and um, buying diamonds and, and I mean you look at the commercials that are on the TV um, you know how many people can really afford some of those things that that they show you know so it's become a very um, commercial and, and um, commodity centered self-centered um, thing for many of the, the holidays that we have so looking back and, and really seeing um, where we come from and, and how our ancestors celebrated um, or observed these observances and then seeing also the reasons why, yeah, why, why did they do this? There's, and if you look at it, it makes, a lot, a lot of it makes sense um, of why they did it. Um, and then it becomes where you don't, it's not looking at yourself, um, and, and expecting something or, or, or being very material, it becomes something where most of it is actually giving out and thinking about others and uh, where you come from, yeah. Wow, yeah, thank you so much for sharing, Eric. I think, yeah, there's just a lot of truth to what you're saying, I, especially us being Okinawan diaspora, we ultimately decide 
the traditions that we choose to engage with or don't engage with. Um, I think it's important that we do put thought and care into what is passed down and how it's kept up. And then also to hold each other accountable to honor our ancestors and keep what was once theirs and now our traditions alive through Suwabachi. Great, we can stop sharing for just a moment. So I wanna segue into our next segment, which will serve as a toast uh, for ourselves and also for our listeners to welcome in uh, the new year. Um, to start, we'll go around the room and share a short hope or prayer for the upcoming year. And this can be a hope for the podcast or for the Shimachu community in general. Um, I will go first since I have mine prepared. <laughs> but uh, for our listeners hearing or watching this, my hope is that 2022 brings you and your family's good health. Um, you know, even if we may have spent the last year in partial isolation, I hope that this pandemic has helped us all realize what's truly important to us, you know, maybe in our personal life or even in our careers and that we can now act on those learnings and on these newfound values in a positive way in this next year. And for any Shimachu who are listening, my prayer is just that 2022 brings you closer to your Shimachu heritage, whether that be through learning about your family's histories or by practicing new Shimachu traditions like the very ones we discussed today. <laughs> I think connecting with your heritage is such an amazing gift and we should very much cherish that and hold on to that as long as we can. So I extend a very loving e so guachi debiru to you and your families. Beautiful, Emma. <laughs> oh, it's a hard one to follow up, but um, my hope and my prayer, well, yeah, I don't have anything prepared, but what I've been thinking about a lot lately has been around transmuting what we have um, and alchemizing. And so my prayer for 2022, for all of you that are listening and joining or watching, um, is that this next year be a year of integration where we take everything that we've learned from the past year and that has been, like you were saying, I'm a, a very challenging year with like isolation, corona, new variants, um, ecological disasters and climate change and everything. And um, I firmly believe that we're all here in this moment and to be an um, a change point. Um, we have the power to make change. And so I hope in 22, 2022, you take these things that we have experienced and you can alchemize them within yourself and take those learnings out into the world in a way that is healing for yourself, for your family, for your ancestors, uh, whether you are Okinawan or Shimanchu or an ally, um, we all have tremendous capability and ability to um, affect change um, for ourselves, um, no matter how small it is. So my prayer to you um, in this next year is that may it be a year of alchemy and change for the better. Um, and i suguachi de viru. And I will pass it to Eric Shinji. Oh, well, that doesn't leave you with much. <laughs> 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 so I guess I wanna I wanna first thank. Um, or, or give thanks to our ancestors um, because all of us um, who are listening or, or watching um, behind all of us there are generations of ancestors that are with us um, every day um, so to thank them um, for what they've given us um, and helped us to get through you know this this um, pandemic, which which everybody looks at as um, negative, or, or or many people look at as negative, but I think it there was a big positive in it, in that it brought a lot of us together, um, who are from different areas of the globe, um, through social media, um, like this podcast, um, and 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 the the um, the Zoom presentations that we've been doing with Ukwenching. Um you know, I think it's it's a message, and and it's also a start of bringing um, um, Uchinanchu together because um, you know th there's there's that that separation of 
um, the Okinawans who live in Okinawa and the diaspora, or or the uh, you know the, the outside Okinawans. But I but I don't think we should really have that separation um, because we're Shimanchu no matter what. Yeah. And that hopefully that um, through the, 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 I'm hoping that um, the, this connection through social media, through these kinds of, of, of spaces, that it will continue um, and help make our, our, um, our well, in, in Hawaii, they call it the Lahui, our, our, our nation, our Lutu nation stronger um, by bringing us all together and hopefully meeting in Okinawa one day um, and recognizing our nation again one day um, and having these dialogues and, and being able to talk about these things together um, in, in, in our homeland space. Mm. Yeah, that is so beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Eric. It is funny how, yeah, we have Mariko in Philadelphia uh, Eric in Honolulu and I'm in California mm -hmm. and to be able to have this conversation today would probably not have happened um, had we not experienced the last year and had this shift mm -hmm. towards a virtual community and engagement. Mm -hmm. Eric Shinshi has brought a very nice Ryukyun poem to share with our listeners. Um, you can go ahead and share your screen and if you could read it in both Uchinaguchi and English for us, then we can close out with that. Okay, so this um, this Sogashi poem uh, is usually done to the music of um, Kajadehu. Um, Arata maru tuchi ni tan tu kubu kajati, kukuru kara shigata wakaku nayusa. So basically um, what it's saying is that um, it, it's a time to decorate or to, to bring out the, 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 the charcoal and the, the kubu and to display it, which brings us to our, our hearts, which makes our hearts um, filled with joy and also um, going back to our youth again or becoming youthful again. Arata maru tuchi ni tan tu kubu kajati kukuru kara shigata wakaku na yusa. Yay! So let us all hold up our glasses and on the count of three, we will kari. So, tichi, tachi, michi, kari! Kari! <laughs> And Isu Guachi Debido. Thank you. Well, it was really, yeah, thank you so much, Mariko and Eric. It was such a pleasure getting to learn from you today, Eric Shinshi. I think as someone personally who celebrates the new year, but I know so little about Okinawa specific traditions. I I really appreciated the knowledge you shared with us and hope to bring more Uchina Su Guachi practices into my own New Year celebration. So Thank you so much. Uh, we do have one more question for you, which is a question we love to ask all of our guests, uh, which is, what is your go-to karaoke song when you go to the karaoke bar? <laughs> um, well, for me, it's, uh, it's usually um, Okinawa uh, folk songs oh. or fauta. So um, nice. one of my favorites is, is uh, Mi Tobuni, um, which is from, um, actually it was, it was a song written by a first generation or Ise um, in Hawaii um, and became popular in Okinawa. Um, Higa Seiru um, wrote it. And um, it talks about, um, it talks about the, it, it, people use it as a, as a song for uh, a husband and wife because it talks about, about a boat, a mitobuni, which the boat represents the husband and the wife, um, the mast being the, the male and the, the, the ship part being the, the female, and that they both have to work together in their, in their life as you know, the, the ocean being the life, and that you don't, you, we, we don't, it's unpredictable as far as being when, when we will have calm, 
times, rough times, stormy times. Um, so I, I, I've also been told that it's not only about a husband and wife, but you can look at it generally as relationship um, between people um, and, and, and yourself as far as looking at life and, and uh, being able to, to work with people, being able to work together um, and, um, and being like that ship going through the, the ocean you know, on, on your journey. Wow. I can't wait to listen to it now, now that I know the backstory. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you. Everything is so riddled with symbolism. I love it. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you again so much, Eric Shinchi, for joining us. Um, where can we direct? Oh, oh, thank you. Where Where can we direct folks um, to find out more about you, um, either on social media or online? Um, you can email me directly um, through um, luchunukwa at gmail.com and um, that's also my podcast um, uh, name too for the uh, Lu Chunukwa podcast that I have um, or also um, through uh, Facebook on our Ukwanching page. Great. Well, thank you for sharing that, Eric. We will definitely have, for all of those that are listening out there, we'll have that information in our show notes. And I think this is actually our first podcast kind of collaboration. So thank you so much for, oh, for oh. yeah, for being on here. I think we've just been individuals so far, but this has been really wonderful. Um, so thank you again. Yeah. Oh, no, thanks for all the work that you guys are doing. This is, this is awesome. Oh, so fun. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And I guess until the next time, Happy New Year and Matayasai. 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 <laughs>
one thing that we've learned that's new to us, but not just new to us, something that's like useful for life. Because my grandma told us it was important to always grow and learn and to continue progressing. Hi, Sai, this is Ko based out of New York City. My New Year's ritual include annual mochi making from scratch, osechi for the last evening of the year, and soba on New Year's Day. Happy turn of the wheel to all of our diaspora fam. Sometimes it feels like there's a lot of expectations in greeting the new year, especially if we want to say, i so guachi debiru, how might we do it in a way that doesn't let our ancestors down? And so there's objects, formulas, prayers, gatherings. And I think this year I let it all fall down. And I think that I return to my body, I return to the silence, return to the stillness. I think sometimes it's good to do fancy things, but it's been a cold winter and everything feels stripped down. And I was thinking as the trees were naked and the snow was falling, it feels like there's mirrors everywhere. And so I'm trying to let go of the expectations to think that there is a right way. The way is always different. The way must transform because if it doesn't, something is lost. I think that something is motion. And I think for indigenous peoples to always move and not be confined to one thing is incredible medicine. So welcome in the new year as I welcome in every new day, trying to witness with less judgment, always failing, but always trying. Nihedebidu. Hi, I am mixed Ryukyun and white. So last year was the first year that I celebrated the Lunar New Year and I did it with my brother and we stayed up until midnight the night before the actual New Year. And then I cooked some shrimp and I had Okinawan soba. The soba was instant, but I just wanted to eat some soba, you know. <laughs> And then right when it hit midnight, that's when we ate our food. I also made some decorations around the house with my brother. And I put some garlic all around the house, chopped up at doorways and stuff, because I did some research around that. Apparently there's some traditions around that. I guess I'll also add that during the quote-unquote regular New Year, I guess, the Western New Year, me and my family, we usually... um we light fireworks and um my mom usually makes uh, western food like black-eyed peas and cabbage and sometimes like turkey or um ham or something similar to like christmas and thanksgiving you know and um yeah i hope to maybe make some more traditions and have some more plus new year's coming up with my family and maybe my other family members will join as well